but also the process, isn't it? We're looking at characters, mm. we're looking at, uh, you know, how would you as a character, as Vaishnavi, mm. deal with it? Or um, we, we were also looking at other kind of actors. Yes, and, yes. and I think that's quite important when you're learning stuff in the here and the now, yeah. that we, are, we have to, whatever you learn, whether it's history, geography, chemistry, you're ha you, we must connect to who yeah, we are. And, and how, you, how you pick up, yeah, pick up things that you can feed into, yeah. into it. And also then, uh, then one would start looking at one's own mannerism. And I think in that way, my style is also about um, creating or allowing you to become dancers, you know, or rather not allowing or becoming, but for you to own your mm -hmm. dance, mm -hmm. Absolutely. you know. Yeah. So I'm, it's not, um, you're not imitating my no. movement. And I think that becomes a... So that's the whole point of it, it's the experience for yourself and yeah. for you. It's but I think then, particularly in, in, in Abhinaya, then it, um, it opens up the, 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 the real joy of it mm. and the fun of it mm. because uh, you're designing mm. the situation. Mm. Mm. You know, you're deciding, mm. uh, oh, okay, so as a character, mm. you know, mm. what are my thought processes, mm. um, which is... And in that way, again, we've talked about um, uh, how different um, um, it is uh, from uh, a contemporary dance um, genre. Um, you know, it's much more um, related to being dance theatre mm. work mm. and the, the, the work we do in, <laughs> um, in dance is not just movement oriented, mm. but it's very much to do with uh, emotion narratives mm -hmm. uh, and not storytelling in that mm -hmm. context no, no. but mm -hmm. much more and uh, yeah and the, the yeah the, the process to be able to to then perform it because in Bharatanatyam you're having to you know, particularly in Varnam you're switching between mm -hmm. dance and then being in character mm -hmm. and being different characters mm -hmm. um, and you have to go through those changes ever so quickly mm -hmm. so unless you've already got images in your head that you mm -hmm. can draw on mm -hmm. and narratives then you can't you've got no time to warm into it it has yeah. to be there yeah. and unless you've set all that up in advance <laughs> and that was a lot, you know that was a lot of uh, the work the process, the process of learning was to have those just take time for it to really go deep for yeah. a Varna or something, yeah. just to really get in. Yeah, and to have certain images that would trigger you to be able to get into that mm. character. I mean, for me it was such fun to teach Abhinaya, um, was, you know, it, it um, yeah, it's, again, we talk about efficiency of movement, mm. it's efficiency of uh, when we've done the work, because Catherine would, because um, as I'm suge I've suggested to you many times mm. as well, and you're doing it, um, Catherine would literally write sentences, mm, mm. and the minute they become part of you, mm. then mm. to go out there mm. and create those sentences is mm. so easy mm. because they're part of mm. your um, your being. I know. Was that different in your own process when you did ah, your solo performance? Ah, that's even interesting. Was it different in my own process when I was training and learning? In a manner, um, it, it was, but not really. And I think that's why I've become the teacher and the dancer I am, because um, um, Kalakshetra, uh, learning in Kalakshetra, I had an um, uh, extraordinary teacher. My main teacher was Chinashada teacher. And she really took a lot of time in explaining um, the literature to us. Um, of course, she m didn't make it... Um, mundane, mm -hmm. you know, it was very much still characters who were divine, and spirituality was very core to her, her her teaching, and because uh, Kalakshetra's uh, um, philosophy uh, came from a theosophical uh, viewpoint, they were all theosophers, so it was interfaith. Um, so, but uh, uh, spirituality was very important to it. Um, but we were told, I mean, she, we were asked to read literature, mm -hmm. lead, uh, read different literature for that character. Mm -hmm. So in that way, yeah, it was very deep. And then I um, trained and um, worked and performed with Leela Sanson, who's now the uh, director of Kalakshetra. And, um, you know, she was, just, she was just an extraordinary person and tutor and dancer. 
and she um, again in body mm -hmm. you know she'd never um, taught anatomy but she's the the one who really opened mm -hmm. uh, uh, my eyes to a completely different being mm -hmm. here um, so um, I don't take yeah in that way I have no credit to who I am mm -hmm. it's all my teachers um, totally um, and yeah she just opened a, a world that is continuously opening even now because of her very much so no uh, my learning was exactly um, how Catherine and Vaishnavi and all the other dancers I, I tutor I think it's only different because uh, because of my teachers giving me the the path of continuously wanting to develop that I have developed uh, in, in, in the way that fits me, it fits being in, in, in the UK and it fits the larger dance world. I, I remember a lot of the, uh, because I've, I've had, um, I mean recently there was uh, two um, practitioners who were looking at um, how the feet are um, or how as a dancer I I connect to my feet and what my whole practice is as a Bhatanatyam dancer um, and these these two women were wanting to understand that connection of the feet to the dancing body because they were um, um, tutoring drama students so they came to uh, you know look at how I teach my class and I've had a lot of ballet and contemporary dancers mm -hmm. come in um, sit uh, in, 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 in our class and most often uh, not most often always go back thinking um, that this could very much be a contemporary ballet class taught today mm -hmm. um, and I think the additional um, f uh, uh, point or note that they also carry with themselves is um, some sense of spirituality mm -hmm. and I think that's to do with um, certainly in the way I have also trained mm -hmm. and also to do with uh, myself and how I'd like to journey with that. And what about the musicians that you oh, gather that around be. for your solo mm -hmm. performances? Good. How do you choose them? Ah, uh -huh. Musicians, I think they're very important. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I mean, um, all, all the work that I've done in the, uh, you know, I, I work very much um, in the system. So I do a lot of education work, um, um, prime, and a lot of education work um, with musicians. Uh, a lot of my work is developed um, with musicians, um, Carnatic musicians, and, um, you know, non Carnatic, so from African to um, um, Latin American um, um, to other genres and cultures that that London is part of. Um, and for two, I, I think for many reasons, I said two, and I, I'm sure I'm going to say many, many more reasons than two. Um, the most important, I think, is I um, Bharatanatyam as a, as a style and as a dancer, I feel I, I'm I'm so closely linked with music and literature that it, it's it's crucial that that dialogue continues to happen. And by um, doing the work uh, as a dancer and as the Jai Dance Company, um, we have gathered an eclectic bunch of uh, people who. Um, who work with us, and even within the classical format, I, you know, I've got musicians walking around. I've got dancers, you know, uh, using their vocal, and there's a lot of things that I like to um, do and use narrative voice. Um, you were talking about using the voice, and that's something that I tend to do even within a classical work because I find that. Um, it's not the work that's old, it's how you present it and how you um, dialogue with that work um, uh, ourselves and therefore with the audience as well. Um, and so we, um, I, have, I have musicians who have been working for many years 
and I've been in this town for a very, very, very long time and uh, very lucky uh, to have musicians who, uh, who understand how I work um, and also understand that our context is very different. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're very, um, they're very um, um, inspired mm -hmm. that um, our, our context is very different. And so, uh, and all the musicians are uh, London-based or UK-based. Um, we've, um, um, I've worked with musicians like Pratap, Balachandran, um, Bhavani, um, Manorama, Vamshi. Um, Yadavan recently performed with us as well. And um, and when and we're planning on a solo, um, I. I call musicians up and see who's available and they're not, fortunately in some ways there are not too many musicians um, who we have a choice to hear. Unfortunately if they're not a around then it's a bit of a difficulty. But we plan it uh, so much, you know, quite a, what a year in, uh, uh, in yeah, advance? Yeah, 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 we've also planned it a year in advance so, mm -hmm. you know, the musicians have already been told. Uh, one of the th other things that we are, it's, some, it's something that um, I've been wanting to do for a long time, which, or not been, but I have been trying to do for a long time um, with music as well, is to bring in younger musicians who can be part of this process as well. And that's always tricky and difficult. Um, but it's happening. I mean, Vaishnavi is fl flottest is a young musician, Bhagiratan, um, who's going to be performing. And so was Catherine. I mean, at that time, um, Kumar was a young musician. Mm -hmm. He's now a very well-known uh, musician who's also performing a lot. Um, so it's because of my continuous contact and dialoguing with musicians, um, both in, in, in a contemporary context and in a classical context that they come. Um, Vaishnavi is also going to have a kahum player, kahum and a tabla player in her concert. Um, we were also uh, in conversation with a double bass player, mm -hmm. but I think it's... Mm -hmm. it's uh, next time. Uh, next time. <laughs> uh, in Vaishnavi's, I mean, which happened with you yourself, isn't it? We, we also had beautiful slides and images mm. uh, reflecting the characters, mm. reflecting, we had these beautiful um, miniature paintings. Yeah, certainly for the Ashtapadi, they, mm. they tied up very closely. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, because there is a huge plethora of, mm. of um, uh, paintings, um, the Kanga, the Basholi, mm. the Kangra Valley, the Basholi paintings. Um, that have painted um, the Gita Govindam mm. uh, that tied up very well with yourself. And Vaishnavi is planning on a on a video about who she is. So um, yeah, sort of. Yeah. 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 But um, just as an opening scene, I want to uh, bring bring the idea more. Um, it's a sort of me dressed up in my Bharatanatyam gear and um, riding on my regular 344 bus from Battersea to Liverpool Street Rich Mix where I'm, I'm okay. had performing sort of metaphorically an idea of a journey and the idea of the inner cosmic dancer mm. and that um yeah, yeah. work in progress <laughs> <laughs> and because your piece is also called three four four to chennai <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you did your sort of performance in a temple how is that different from a theater how is that different from a theater well as i said um, in india i mean I, I grew up in india i um i learned um, and in that way, very much as a Tamil girl, I learned, um, my mother was a Carnatic singer, she did her Bharatanatyam, I mean, she was a Bharatanatyam uh, performer, dancer. And in many ways, I'm very much like her because she was an actor and she was a poet, or she is a poet. She still writes, thankfully. She doesn't dance as much, but she still sings. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I was dancing and, and you know, in, 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 in fact, she's the one who started doing workshop in schools. You know, and as a little girl, I used to go around mm -hmm. helping her out. And yeah, I, I'm doing exactly the things that my mother, my teachers um, have, 
have done or are doing. Um, so I was dancing all the time and I was performing all the time. So, you know, um, the idea of Arangetram is, um, is quite different now, certainly in the, in the kind of British, uh, outside of the UK con or India context, mm -hmm. not UK, India context, because, um, you know, Arangetra means the first time you ascend the stage. And even within the Devadasi system and other systems, you know, I remember the story, and I'm sure it's, uh, you know, when they would have learned their Alaripu and um, Shabdam perhaps, when they do their Shalanga Puja, that's a Arangetra. I mean, it, it's nothing like what it is now outside of India. Um, so, you know, it, the, the point was, why, why should, you know, Arangetra in the context that, you know, um, we are talking or it's being talked here, mm. it, it was not the context for me in India. Yeah. And, uh, and my Kalakshitra teachers would say, anyway, you're doing, you know, you've been doing programs oh. almost every, mm. you know, so. month and, you know, as a performer, uh, why would you want to do mm. a solo? Mm. And, and to me, I wanted to do a solo uh, in some ways for similar reasons, like yourselves. I just wanted to have a, that kind of individual dialogue with my tutor, um, Lila Akka, um, and, uh, and connect um, uh, with m my musicians, mm -hmm. or, or her musicians, mm -hmm. um, and ha just have an experience mm -hmm. there. And, and therefore, and I'm, um, I'm a very spiritual person, so I wanted to do it, you know, in, in a temple. I, I thought if I was going to do it as an offering, it seemed, um, you know, temple would be the best offering. Um, and this was a temple in Delhi, and they had a stage, you know, a proper auditorium. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we did a, uh, I did an offering, the Archana, and, you know, I was not there. They just did the Archana, and we did a private mm -hmm. Shalanga Puja mm -hmm. for me. It was not for the audience at all. Mm -hmm. And the show was just a, a professional performance. Mm -hmm. I came on stage. There was a, and we did a like Kalakshetra. We did, um, we did a, 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 a shlokam. All my dance friends mm -hmm. on stage um, uh, recited a shlokam. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, fifteen minutes of shlokams, and then they left. Um, Solal Manson was my guest, mm -hmm. um, so she offered her. She offered the shalangi, which had been uh, prayed to, and then it was just a professional show. Um, from Aladipu to Jati Swaram to Shabdan, because another thing, uh, I mean, yeah, one doesn't get a chance to show all of the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a show like that. So, yeah, whatever I had learned from Leelaka, and then that was also for me. It was also about acknowledging her. Otherwise, you know, as a as a dancer, and as a professional dancer, you're always performing, um, and she was doing Natavangam for me, but actually formally acknowledging her and thanking her um, uh, was done at, at you know, um, and it, that in, in terms of cost also, you know, it's nothing like, uh, and uh, to us also, to me, that's why I do us, I don't call it an arangetram, it's a solo for me. It's, it's more about the art form, it's more about mm -hmm. engaging with musicians and, um, and what's the take for the dancers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my other dancers, Sara, Elena, Mariana, um, you know, they haven't done a you know, solo in that way. Um, I, but they have been, you know, I've created margams for them, they've performed margams. So, um, you know, this, this conversation with live music is, uh, is something that I think we all, it's all about our learnings mm. and it's about the art form. Mm. So how would you define the Arangetrim then, like the Arangetrim that's very popular in the UK? How would I define the Arangetrim that's popular here in the UK? I think the Arangetrim, uh, I think, I mean, it's different for different communities, but perhaps it's much more of a coming of age um, of for the dance, for the dancer. I mean, I don't know if you yeah, maybe as a shil, sh for Sri Lankan Tamil community, maybe it's an identity mm. thing. 
um, because I I certainly know it is mm. um, of a lot of the Sri Lankan community a lot of the Sri Lankan Tamils I've spoken to and um, dancers I have um, I have occasionally gone and taught mm -hmm. you know as a guest tutor in mm -hmm. other um, for other studios mm -hmm. it's very much linked to Tamil identity mm -hmm. and Bharatanatyam as a cultural mm -hmm. form is linked to our Tamil identity and interestingly I mean actually that reminds me I teach in this cat program in da mm -hmm. at dance exchange and, um, and not this year but uh, last couple of years two years uh, we've had a few uh, dancers who are Tamil Sri Lankans and you know my fun for experiment <laughs> you know I I feel that you know certainly as in, in as in as you know any culture and certainly India and Bharatanatyam uh, equally has continuously journeyed so you know this notion of it being this classical form that never changed ever is not true at all. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, and so you know the fun of continuously experimenting, relooking at things. So I just for you know the ease of learning, even I just got my dancers, uh, which we have done, uh, just to speak the Laripu and work. Um, so, because we ha we have done it, mm. I've done it on all of you, and I know it works. It's very effective, um, and it allows uh, the, uh, and, uh, uh, the fact that we are also creating this form, which is in a way it's it's not a British form. I I think it is now a British form, but I think the uh, people who are not engaged in it might see it as separate. Mm. S and I feel that because Bharatanatyam has also so many elements that if you present one element at a time, people are able to enjoy it fully for what it is. Mm. So the spoken, for me, the Alaripu, just speaking and walking, mm. allows people to <gasps> go, wow! And perhaps understand it a bit better. Because yeah. usually it's for a sort of novice eyes, yeah. completely overwhelming, sort of yeah. in an in a awesome way. But um, I think just breaking it down to its parts, yeah. which you do sometimes, just... Yeah. It's great, and also it for people to see. Oh my God, these are dancers, and they can they have a voice, mm -hmm. and it's very much you know in the contemporary dance world they are discovering it, and to me it's like oh no, we've always had it. So it's also about offering that. So anyway, um, in this program, I got these dancers uh, doing that, and um, they were doing lots of you know kind of abstracting, and there was you know suddenly there was a breakdown. And uh, uh, there was a kind of a huge hoo ha. I I had the manager come and say, you know, these dancers don't want to do this, and it was really lovely because you know, of course, not lovely in the context <laughs> of, you know, um, the tension um, by these dancers, but uh, uh, I always feel, as you know, there's only solutions. So it allowed us with the dancers to talk about it, and the dancers said they're not happy because they think Bharatanatyam is classical, it's a Tamil identity, it's identity with uh, faith and religion, and who am I to uh, change it? Mm -hmm. And it gave, it allowed me to see their perspective, and they're very right in, in what they are saying, because that's how they are associate. And so it allowed me and allowed us to actually have a dialogue, mm -hmm. to say, did you know actually, it, no, it's you know this is always changing, and and if it was so, then none of us should be dancing because mm -hmm. it's only the Devadasis, mm -hmm. and they went, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. really? <laughs> so the fact that we, I as a a, a a Brahmin woman, I mean I don't consider that at all, but mm -hmm. I mean I got to know I was Brahmin only when I was sixteen when I had to go and fill up a form in, in my college, <laughs> in my final uh, school uh, exam. So, what are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to go and call up my father. What are we? <laughs> you know, so, so you know, these context only, uh, uh, um, yeah. So, the identity, I realized, was very close to the Tamil girls mm -hmm. here, Sri Lankan Tamil. And other communities, I think, you know, uh, for the tutor, certainly, I know it 
it allows me to dialogue with musicians. Otherwise, you know, where do we have the luxury to pay for musicians to do this? Um, and um, yeah, it keeps the, I think, in that way it keeps the, uh, the dance industry, South Asian dance industry, really alive. Um, but uh, for me, where I kind of, um, when I say I don't do the arangetram, in, in a way, because for me it's the art, it's, it's, the, it's the dialoguing with the dancer and the musicians. Um, it's, it, and it's done professionally because um, to, of any show that you would go and see uh, in a theatre. Um, conceptually it should be interesting uh, in, in uh, what we use, how we use it, musically, even if it's a classical margam, mm. um, you know, instruments that we might mix with, mm. uh, narratives that we might use uh, are all very different and, you know, yeah, it's just a professional show so there are no, um, no thank yous to governors <laughs> and school uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And free bits. <laughs> <laughs> and everything and and yeah, non absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, it's very much and the focus is the dancer. Mm. Was that sort of also a bit of a collection of the tradition in terms of not having a million costumes or mm. sort of keep things simple? And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, absolutely it's a Kalakshetra tradition, it's a Leela Samson tradition. Mm about and also you know um, Anna Dhananjan in all the um, professional mm -hmm. I suppose is the professional mm -hmm. tradition uh, of and yeah I think it's really nice to think Rukmini Devi decided to say we own the dance mm -hmm. it's it's about yeah really giving full ownership to the dancer and the dance that's what is most important and um, absolutely nothing else um, it's very important for me um, that all the dancers uh, I engage with have a, a continuous journey. Um, so I know after your solo, um, you came again to Chennai and yeah. then we did a rural touring as a company yeah. and you joined us as one of our dancers. Yeah, that was a fantastic uh, experience. Yeah. That's something I definitely couldn't have done without that period of intensive yeah, training. Absolutely. So and neither could I have, uh, yeah. you know, chosen to yeah. get you. What uh, about the rural training? A tour, a tour. Rural training. Well, as a company, we tour a lot. Yeah. And uh, rural touring is a scheme um, to tour. Um, so... Um, well, in the UK? In the UK. Well, okay. yeah. In the UK. Um, and equally, one of the things that, I mean, uh, for me as a Bharatanatyam dancer, um, I mean, I do a lot of contemporary work, but if I was going to create ensemble work or group work using Bharatanatyam, where do I, do I go and find my dancers? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's, it, that, that's also another reason I, you know, train mm -hmm. my dancers, in, 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 you know, intensively. Yeah. And it's great when they do take this journey, mm -hmm. which means I have a pool of dancers. Um, I can, you know, mm -hmm. ask to come. Because it's not just about, I mean, there, you know, there are in, there quite a lot of, really well-trained dancers today in the UK. But it's not just about uh, picking good dancing bodies, it's also about connection, you know, heart connection and, you know, how I might want to do a movement differently. So it's really nice to have um, trained dancers. And you were saying, yeah, the solo is not about your identity. And in a way, it's even today when you're doing it's not about mm. an identity, mm. it's something quite mm. different. I mean, yeah. certainly it's not about your identity. No, it's, it's, there's, no there's no community identity for me in, in Bharatanatyam at all. And, and, you know, and I sometimes kind of fight against this sort of image that any Westerner doing Indian art is sort of trying to be Indian in some way. <laughs> it's, it's not. I came to Indian art through going to very high-level performances, mm. um, meeting particularly in North India some, some phenomenal performers. And, and for me... Um, Bharatanatyam was the dance form that just sort of fitted me best in yeah. lots, lots of respects. Absolutely. Um, oh, totally. Yeah, so it was just about me finding an art form that worked for me. It didn't matter where it came from at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. um, then once you're involved in it, of course you need to look at its context mm -hmm. and um, sort of etc. But it was, you know, it was about, it was, yeah, about finding a, um, 
finding an art rather than an identity. Yeah, totally. very much. Mm. And in fact, all the dancers I've largely, or, or trained, um, Elena, she's a Latvian, mm. Katrina, she's mm. Latvian, and, and yeah, the dance completely fits them. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's if you were to believe in reincarnation, that's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it, they're both not in bodies, yeah. Yeah. totally. Uh, much more than Shobita is. And this is Shobita is another dancer who's uh, training now. She's a Kalari contemporary dancer, and uh, you know, uh, the the Bharatanatyam you do is more Bharatanatyam. So it's not so much, and that's what is so exciting for me, um, because now we have examples. I've always believed um, that um, dance is not um, color, cultural, uh, ethnic specific. No, it's not. Too. It, it's to do with. It's to do with it's um, it's um, it's so difficult. No, it's it's visceral. It's mm. it's it's quality. Mm. It's skin quality mm. that is its form. Mm. Mm. And Kamala, who came yesterday, mm. Mm. Kamala Devam. Uh, I mean, it Bharatanatyam is her form, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know she's white. She's American, yeah. Uh, yeah. and yeah. So and that to yeah. me, you're very right. And there's something that we talked and we celebrated that when you, when I see you do BN, it's just you. Mm. Um, and, uh, and the reactions from the dance world, you know, people are only interested in how well you dance. Yeah, totally. Not where you come Absolutely. from. Absolutely. It's I've only ever sort of been questioned, maybe in more community performance Mim situations. Yeah, community, yeah. And never from dancers, always from their parents. <laughs> you know, well, why do you, why do you do Dove Bright Night? <laughs> You know, and, and sometimes you just get a little bit annoyed and sort of start talking about how Ate learned from <laughs> the Pavlova. <laughs> yeah. How did it compare with your ballet training? Um, well, it was different because I came to Bright Nottingham as an adult. Um, so it was a different experience, um, mm. really. And, you know, it was very easy for me as a child to go along to ballet classes after school. Um, mm. Whereas, you know, as an adult, I've really had to kind of fight to make time um, to mm. do it. So it's been a much more conscious sort mm. of much more Position. conscious pursuit of it. Yeah. Mm. But it definitely helped just to have had that grounding as a child in mm. in learning how to learn movement. Yeah, very sense. much. Mm. Very much. And the way I teach and for mm. me, uh, when earlier you talked about efficiency of movement, mm. um, yeah, I'm very keen that whatever level people learn um, Bharatanatyam mm. or dance, and particularly if they're learning from me, that their quality and their standard has to be very high and therefore you know um, I, I also trained in yoga and Pilates so that I can bring that into the the teaching practice um, and uh, and we know that you know by doing these other practices um, you learn dance really very fast mm. and I think you know yeah, in fact, when I was when I was um, working towards my solo, I went I went back to ballet class mm. just because it was the best way to condition my legs yeah. and muscles. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and totally. it really helped. Yeah. yeah, very very much. So, what kind of ballet class did you do? Um, recently, um, this I mean, London is full of adult ballet classes, mm. and they're really just drop in. Um, so I think um, I was going to. Yeah, different teachers have different. Different teachers, styles. yeah. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't you know it was just to condition the body. Yeah, I just you know, we'd go along Fun. as as, as yeah. you'd go to a, a yoga class. It didn't yeah. have to be going anywhere. It was just yeah. to to activate certain muscles. Yeah, mm. I mean, I I um when I uh, I I've taken ballet classes, mm. um, and I think the, the it's the best form of uh, training dancers because you really, um, yeah, um, it, there's so much of detail, um, in in the way it's taught. Um, maybe not everyone teaches there, but I've also been lucky to. Mm. You know, um, when as an adult, when you make those choices, you know, um, I feel both my in my own dancing practice and in my teaching practice, the yoga classes and the yoga teachers and the yoga training and the Pilates that I trained in as well, um, professionally, um, have has really helped me to continuously deepen my practice. And uh, ballet classes, um, largely, it's the place because it's so close by. Mm -hmm. Um, the ballet that's taught there and um, the contemporary classes that are taught there as well really allows um, to condition but in movement and then you know mm. you can bring that sensibility mm. 
been doing part of an art team. This is fantastic in London. You can learn any kind of yeah. dance here. I mean, I wish you know because I grew up in Surrey, and uh, you know there only was a ballet class to go to. I <laughs> wish there'd been that yeah. kind of choice at a younger age. Yeah, yeah, and, and in terms of um, you know just rounding off mm. off this conversation mm. with um, ourselves, I think we are always going to be journeying. Mm. Uh, I think you're always going to be coming to class, performing, and um, and having you know, interesting dialogues and going to museums together and things like that. Yeah. And that's the fun of, um, of being a, a, a dance tutor, I think, for me. Yeah. And, and having met so many lovely people. Yeah. 